guys, Kevin Kevin for Arrow, Season 2, Episode 7, Brotherhood. And I was definitely looking forward to this episode. Like I said, Arrow is probably some of the most fun I am having watching any show right now. I mean, this season has just been so much fun. And uh, this was definitely one of the more bigger episodes of this season. You know, particularly this season, there's been really fun episodes. And then there's been some really shocking ones. And this was by far the most shocking of the bunch. Now... I still don't think it was as strong as episode 4. I will say that I still don't think it was as strong. But it definitely was one of the strongest of the season. I absolutely loved this episode. There was so much that happened in this episode that I really loved. It was genuinely shocking. It was funny at points. It had some really great scenes. It was mainly Diggle-centric. But let's just get into this episode and um, let's talk about it. So, And of course, just like the Flash, Arrow won't be back till two weeks. So I thought this was a good episode to leave off on. So the episode opens with two motorcycles cr crash, um, crashing a armored car while the driver's focus on him. A panel truck pulls out in front of him. He crashes into it. He crawls up before his assistants can shoot him. The man is rescued by Black Canary Sonic Scream. Team Arrow then squares off with a handful of ghosts with Thea barely staying her hand while she, when she's tempted to kill one of them. And when it's clear her plan has been foiled, one of the ghosts throws a grenade into the truck, burning the money. And Oliver tells the team that the money was a bailout of a local bank from the federal government and, uh... Again, I like how they're a lot this season. They're starting with actually, you know, they're, they're actually starting with the, uh, you know, the metahuman or the big bad of the episode. I like that because obviously Dark is our main villain here. So back at the lair, Team Arrow has a short meeting after which Diggle gives his Oliver his brother's file, explaining that Hive had Andy killed because his criminal operations conflicted with theirs. And Oliver tells Diggle that his brother deserves the benefit of the doubt, and they should really look into it. He really isn't buying all of this, you can tell. It just doesn't seem plausible to Oliver. A lot of what Diggle's saying, it just isn't all adding up. And I can honestly understand what Oliver's talking about, because it just doesn't seem right what's going on with this whole Andy situation. Um... Also, guys, this also was the episode where the flashbacks were the best yet. I actually got really into the flashbacks in this episode. Uh, because Oliver learns right away the man who attacked him and who he killed is the brother of the woman he saved. So right away we have a really interesting conflict in terms of the flashbacks. And I really like that. So in the present, Ray, surprisingly, is still here. I thought he was going to leave with Sarah. But no, he actually is kind of hiding out. He doesn't really know what to do. He comes into Palmer Tech and Felicity asks him to help her identify the DNA from a toothy glove pulled out from one of the ghosts. It was a hollow one filled with poison. And Ray figures that it's been degraded on purpose using some kind of device. And you can see that Ray really doesn't know what to do right now. I mean, he's back, but everyone thinks he's dead. And uh, he's kind of hiding out. And, you know, Felicity wants him to get that company back. And it's just really interesting stuff for Raw. I like seeing Ray and Felicity working together because we're not going to see a lot of it. I'm pretty sure after, you know, the next episode of the crossover, then we're going to say bye. To, then we're going to say goodbye to Ray on this show. So at the campaign office, Oliver wants to push a jobs program, which Alex doesn't think is a good idea. Um, he wants to have a full-on gala, but their debate is interrupted by a call, and Felicity directs them to a pharmaceutical company where they can find the compound that was used on the tooth, and a ghost tries to shoot Black Canary, but Diggle knocks him out, and when Diggle takes the unconscious man's mask off, it's his brother under there. Andy wakes up, kills Dig, kicks Diggle off, and runs. So yes, Andy is alive, and... Holy shit, that was shocking. I didn't see that coming at all. What I love about this, guys, is that they did not say anything about this in the, um, in the, like, in the promos. Nothing indicated that this was going to happen, and I love that. I love finding out that Diggle's brother's alive. I mean, I would have never thought of that. I would have thought that maybe just something happened to his brother, but I never thought of the possibility of him being alive. That is an awesome twist. I love the show was willing to do something shocking because it was really well thought out, I have to say. Definitely very well thought out. I mean, just everything they were saying with Andy really wasn't making sense, and I really love the fact that not only is his brother alive, he's working with Hive, and I think it definitely is very interesting. So back to the lair, Oliver wants to find Andy because obviously something's going on with him. Now, I was thinking they were going to reveal that Andy was in, like, the Lazarus pit or something, but they figure out what's going on, but Diggle's determined that he's dead, or at least dead to him. He doesn't think that this is his brother, and he really doesn't want to face him because all this time he thought his brother was dead, and he obviously is really upset because now he knows his brother's alive, and his brother never tried to contact him in any way. So, in the flashback, Oliver and the other soldier talk to Ryder, who figures out that Oliver's telling the truth about just defending himself. He has the other man taken away, and this is why the flashback's really interesting, because a lot of the men turn against Oliver in this episode. You know, obviously, they're finding out that he's killed, um, you know, basically, uh, 
that he's killed this man. They want to know why he killed this man. And Oliver's trying to justify himself. It was a very powerful scene, and especially for the flashbacks, which usually are quite weak. It was really great um, to have really strong flashbacks in this episode. So at Hive, Dark summons Lance, telling him that security believes he staged their meeting last week so that Green Arrow could follow Dark, and he tells Lance to tread carefully. And before leaving, Lance sees an address on Dark's table. So then we get to the dinner, and this is when things get really crazy. Oliver makes a speech, then asks Lance for help. Lance tells him about the address he saw during his meeting with Dark. Laurel talks to Diggle about his brother, and Diggle says he doesn't want to hold out false hope that his brother isn't a bad guy. He thinks his brother is a criminal. He doesn't think he should trust his brother. He really doesn't want much of a relationship with his brother just because he doesn't really trust him, which is understandable. I mean, obviously, this is his brother we're talking about. He hasn't really... um you know, been there for him, he's obviously been gone all this time, he thought he was dead, and he's not, and it wasn't like a Lazarus Pit situation, his brother kind of just left, and obviously he really wants nothing to do with him, so I really like seeing that genuine, um, you know, genuine emotion that Diggle had throughout this whole episode, really great stuff there. So, Oliver speaks with supporters, including Dark, who asks for a moment alone. The two of them talk about Oliver's restoration to Starling Bay Project, and he tells Oliver to forget about it, or he'll no longer be unopposed, and it's a really powerful scene between Dark and Oliver. I was surprised that Dark was actually willing to work with Oliver. Um, because, you know, Dark just wants to make the... Dark just wants to take over the city. He doesn't want to kill the Arrow. He wants to take over the city, though. And it's really interesting what Dark's going to do here. Um, and at the lair, Oliver actually wants to agree to Dark's demands in order to get inside the organization. He actually wants to work with Dark and Felicity saying this is a horrible idea. That he didn't become mayor to take down Dark. He became mayor to make Star City better. And that really is true. I mean, he never wanted to take down Dark. That was never his mission here. And Oliver definitely is starting to get distracted by Dark. And I really feel that's Dark's plan. He's trying to make him think that you know, Dark has this plan, which he really doesn't. I really feel like that's what Dark's trying to do, and that's really interesting. So, in the flashback, Ryder offers Oliver a whip and the chance to use it on the soldier who conspired against him, and Oliver uses it on the man's back, and it's a really crazy scene there. So then we get to Alex and Thea's date, who we focus a lot more on this episode, Alex and Thea. Alex jokes about how Diggle finding his brother alive after eight years is even more impressive than the fight for Thea and Oliver. He takes a phone call and excuses himself, and as soon as he leaves, a man approaches Thea, starts harassing her. She jumps in, beats him brutally, only stopping when Alex shouts at her. That was insane when she was just beating him brutally. I mean, we don't really know why she's doing this. I mean, she's acting like she was in the first few episodes, and there's really... Not much of a reason why she's doing this, but obviously she's doing this for a reason. We just don't know what it is yet, and I thought that was definitely very crazy. I mean, why is Thea just randomly hurting this man? It just it didn't really make sense why she was doing that. So at home, Diggle tells Lila that he doesn't know what to do about the revelation that his brother's back. You know, he this really caught him off guard. He never expected something like this to happen, and he really doesn't know how to react to it. And there's a knock at the door, and Lila answers, and it's Oliver. He offers to bring Team Arrow in to help Diggle look after his look for his brother. And Diggle says he wants to, it to just be he and Oliver. This was really interesting. He doesn't want to endanger the others. He wants this to be a solo mission. And uh, he really wants this to just be them and not have the other team members involved because he's really worried about their safety. And they go and watch Dark start a speech to the ghost. But one of them spots the pair and they all open fire. And after a brief fight, Oliver and Diggle inca incapacitate most of them at half to retreat. And uh, really crazy scene here, definitely. I mean, I have to say, in terms, I forgot to say, in terms of Diggle, this was definitely Diggle's best episode. I absolutely loved everything going on uh, with Diggle in this episode. Really amazing stuff, I have to say. Um... Really, everything that Diggle had in this episode was just amazing. John Barrowman, especially this entire episode, amazing stuff. He really killed it this entire episode. He really was amazing, I have to say. I really, really props to him. He did an amazing job. So, at the lair, Diggle's feeling bad for letting Oliver go, looking for Andy, and he tells Oliver to just let it go, and uh, that Andy made his choice, and that he really shouldn't worry about it. You know, Andy made his choice, and they don't need to look for him, because if Andy's bad, he's bad, and Oliver says that the men they saw were being manipulated by Dark, and he really doesn't think that Andy's bad. He thinks he's kind of being manipulated, or Dark's making him do these things, and Diggle says it doesn't matter. Andy let his son and his wife believe he was dead for eight years, and there's no excuse for it. Ultimately, Oliver tells Diggle that he needs to believe that no matter how bad things get, they can come back from it. And 
I like that Oliver said that to Eagle. It really is true. And Eagle says that apparently Oliver didn't learn much from the league last year. Now, that really is true. What has Oliver's motive been all season? To try to turn his life around. That's what Oliver's been trying to do this whole time. And I like that Diggle said that's Oliver. Telling him, look, this is what you've wanted. You've made that choice. Now, you need to help me with that. And that fighting dark and that fighting dark from the inside isn't actually operating differently like he keeps saying he's going to. He's really not doing anything that different. He says that to fight differently, they have to take dark down in the light of day and... That's something that they're not used to doing. You know, they're not used to doing things during the day. They always do things at night. So they want to do this during the day to see if this makes a difference. And it doesn't seem like a huge difference, but it really is when you think about it. I mean, they're used to fighting people during the day, during night, you know, when it's dark and everything. But they're going to fight people during the day, and that's definitely very interesting. So back on Leanne Yu, we get this really emotional scene, out actually, between Oliver and... Um, Tiana, I thought this was a really satisfying scene. He tells, he has to tell um, Tiana that her brother is dead, and you really see how upset she is, obviously, on what's going on, that Oliver just said this, and plus, she doesn't know that this was Oliver that did it. You know, she doesn't really know that. It's a really sad scene. So, in the present, Ray tells Felicity that it doesn't seem like he made a positive impact in the world, so he doesn't know why he should admit he's back from the dead. He tells her that he found information linking the two to a closed-down psychiatric hospital, and it's interesting what we find out here, that he actually hasn't spoken to anyone, we find out. You know, he hasn't talked to a single person since he's been gone. He's kind of just been all by himself, and Felicity obviously is really upset because he's claiming that he wants to be alive, but yet he hasn't had any interactions with anyone besides Team Arrow, so nobody knows he's alive. But I like it's that because he kind of thinks he hasn't made a positive impact in the world. Really setting up Legends of Tomorrow well. I feel like in Legends of Tomorrow, it's all going to be about him trying to redeem himself as this hero, and not as just some businessman. He wants the world to see him in a good way and not just some failure. He doesn't want to be seen like that. So at the lair, Team Arrow gets ready to go after the ghost and bring back Andy over Diggle's objections, even though he said not to. They're going to, because they obviously... They want to trust him. They want to make Diggle see that they can that he can trust his brother, and I really like that. So, Team Arrow arrives fine. There's a lot of activity going on, given that it's 3 a.m. Um, we see, and there's a there is a lot going on here. Curtis has developed infrared glasses that should virtually amass the ghost, so that Team Arrow can look for Andy. While they're strategizing, Speedy and Canary run across ghosts, and luckily Speedy ends up in close quarters combat with Andy. Unlucky, he's trying to unluckily he's trying to kill her, and eventually she tranks him. But Oliver still needs to go help to carry him. So during the fight, Adam shows up to help out. And I like that Ray got in there and helped them. That was really cool. This entire scene was awesome. I have to say, some of the best fight scenes of uh, this of this season was in this episode. So in the hallway, Dark sees Thea and grabs her, having recognized her fighting style, and pegged her as one of um. And Pegder is one of Malcolm's trainees, and when he tries to use his soul-sucking power thing on her, it doesn't work and hurts his hand, allowing her to get away. So now we're realizing why Thea's acting this way, because obviously she was under um, Dark's control. So Canary has Andy, but he needs Adam's suit, but needs Adam's help to get him out around the crowd. Oliver takes on the ghost himself with a last-minute assist from Diggle, who says that his brother Oliver needed him, and uh, that was great. When Diggle said that Oliver really is his brother, yes, those two really are like brothers, and I thought that was a really great scene. I mean, you really see that, yes, they definitely are like brothers. They'll always have that bond, and that's something I think that Oliver's really trying to show, that, look, and you might your brother might not support you, but I'm always going to be there for you. Um, I always am there for you, and I think it was a really great scene. I, I definitely really like that scene between Oliver and Diggle because yeah, they are they are brothers. They'll always be there for each other, and I love that. Really, really great stuff there. I really love that scene. I have to say, really powerful stuff. Um, so. Then we see at the lair, Diggle thanks the team for helping with Andy. Ray says he isn't, he still isn't going back to work because he needs to find something else to do with his life. That'll, but it'll, that'll, he'll start to be a hero from time to time. And Oliver tells him he's decided that Diggle was right. He's not going to work with Dark. He just doesn't think it's a good idea. And I like that Oliver didn't do that because that would be stupid if he did that. And I like they actually had him go into the storyline of having him think about it because I thought he was actually going to work with Dark. If he was, that would be a really stupid decision because, one, we know how he did things with um, Roz last year, and we know how bad that turned out with Roz. And obviously, he would have done the same thing with Dark, and it just wasn't a good decision. So I like these, like, you know what? I'm not going to work with Dark. I thought that was smart of him not to do that, definitely. Um, so I really like that, I have to say. 
And I like that Diggle was basically the one that helped out Oliver figure out the decision. Like, he had Felicity's help, but it was mainly Diggle that did most of the work for him, and I really like that here. So on Leon, you Oliver produced a map he listed from Writer's Office. It's Constantine's map of the island. Oliver needs her help to use it properly. So it kind of seems like they're going to go on this quest. I'm not really sure. We'll have to see what happens with that. So at home, Thea invites Malcolm over, telling him that Damien's, that uh, Dark's powers didn't work on her, and her bloodlust was gone, and she wants Malcolm to help her figure out a way to make that permanent, and basically, now we know what's going on with Thea. She obviously was taken over by Dark, that's why she was acting like she was, and she wants to make sure that they're gone for good. Now... Malcolm hopefully can help her out with this, but it always seems like Malcolm has his own agenda. Like, it seems like he has something else up his sleeve. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with this. We haven't seen a lot of Malcolm this season, so this is a good way to incorporate Malcolm into the storyline, but we'll have to see if this works out because I'm not really sure if it's going to. So in the lair, Diggle goes to see Andy, who is in a cell. He wants answers, but Andy won't talk to him. Diggle throws the file at his brother, who looks through it and hands it back, saying it's all true, and, uh... Everything in that file was true. So that's really interesting uh, that Andy is saying that everything in the file is true. So was Andy put in the Lazarus pit by, Dave, or by Dark? I think it's possible. I think it's very possible that Andy could have been in that Lazarus pit and that Dark could have easily put him in that. I can understand that. Or maybe something happened. I mean, I can... I could totally understand if Andy died and then he was put in the Lazarus pit. That would make perfect sense if that's what's going on, because Dark would know how to do that. Dark would know how to do anything on Andy. I mean, Dark is so powerful with his magic and shit that, honestly, anything is possible when it comes to how Andy's alive. So, honestly, I believe anything with that. That's really interesting, I have to say. So, we'll have to see what happens with that. So, at a press event the next morning, all repairs to launch the program that Dark wanted him to stop. And, obviously, he's doing this against Dark's, you know, discretion. And Thea asks Alex to be patient with her about the whole crazy attacking people thing. Um, and I like that he said that, you know, he wants to start over again. And they want to do this again. It's, it's, it's really sweet that they're trying to start a relationship. I like these two overall. Definitely, I like them. But I like that Thea's saying, look, we gotta wait. Obviously, I'm going through a lot. And I don't. I like that they're not trying to rush this. I like that she wants to take this slow. Because she knows right now that she just is very unstable. And she's not herself. And she needs to... She, he needs to wait till she can be herself. And I really like that. So then the ending of this episode, Oliver tells the press that the fight to save Star City isn't going to be fought in the shadows, but in the light of day. And uh, he doesn't want to do this, you know, in the dark anymore. He wants to do this in the light of day. That'll never stop fighting to save the city. As he says this, he locks eyes with Dark, and Dark is right in the crowd. Such an epic ending, and that's how the episode ends. So overall, guys, this was definitely one of the strongest episodes of this season by far. I absolutely love this episode, especially for Diggle, like I said. Definitely Diggle's best episode. Um, a few things I do want to talk about. I really don't know what's going to happen in the mid-season finale, guys. I mean, I had a much better idea uh, last season, but this season I'm really not sure. And I think it's because I think Dark, you know, is going to be this villain for this entire season. So I'm really not sure what they're going to do in the mid-season finale. But I don't really care because the season is just so great that honestly... I don't really care what they do. They're, they're on a very good streak right now. They've really been handling things very well. That I don't really care um, what the outcome of it is. I think it's going to end up really satisfying either way. I really like that. And I have to say, like I said, definitely a very great episode. Now, this whole thing with Dark, how is this all going to work out? Obviously, Oliver clearly is trying to make Dark mad. He's definitely going to try to put up a fight to get Dark to go against him. There's definitely going to be a lot between Oliver and Dark. I can't wait for that confrontation between them. It was awesome. Um, I'm definitely, I, I really hope, I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. Because I know we're going to get that confrontation very soon. And that's going to be awesome when we do. Um, definitely looking forward to that. Now, is Andy telling the truth? Do you think that Andy was put in the Lazarus pit? I'm not really sure. We'll have to see. I want to say that maybe he is. I, I This is definitely not the end of this storyline. There's definitely more to it. I feel like he was put in the Lazarus pit because if he says everything in that file is true, then maybe he died and Dark did something to him. I'm not really sure. We'll have to see. Um... Thea, is Thea going to be, is um, Malcolm going to be able to help her with her powers? I hope that he does. I hope that he doesn't try to do something else. Because we always know that Malcolm always kind of has his own agenda. So I'm not really sure if this is going to go well. I hope it goes well because I really want things to go well for Thea, obviously. Um, 
mainly because I want things to work out with Alex. I want them to have a genuine uh, relationship and a genuine connection. I think those two are quite good together, and I think Thea needs someone like Alex. She really does. I mean, Alex genuinely cares about her. He wants to be there for her. Thea's really, the last person that Thea had learned that was Roy, and Roy, of course, is gone. This is the perfect way for her to move on from Roy, and I think it's going to be very cathartic for her if she does move on from Roy. It's, I, I'm really looking forward, I really hope that that works out well for Thea. I want her to move on, like I said, I really do want her to move on from Roy, and that'd be great if she did. Um, Definitely, I, I hope that works out for her. I really, like I said, I'm getting into the flashbacks, though. I have to say, guys, I thought they were actually really great in this episode. I definitely am really enjoying them. Um, what's going to happen with Oliver? What is this quest that they're going to have to go on? We'll have to see. I can't wait for, obviously, the crossover between Arrow and the Flash. It's going to be awesome. But what is really going to happen with Ray here? Obviously, he's saying he's going to become a hero. Really, what is going to happen here? We'll have to see. Obviously, I think they're going to show it all during uh, Legends of Yesterday. Definitely, that's going to happen. We'll have to see what happens with that. I'm definitely looking forward to the crossover with Flash and Arrow, which is in two weeks. But, I, you know, the thing I like about this is that they're not hyping it up, like, way too much like last year's. Last year's was more of a fun crossover, and this year's is a genuine story. Like, I want you guys to know that. Last year's, you know how it was kind of just like, Fla Arrow was on here for this episode, and Flash was on there for this episode. No, this is a genuine two-part story. It's going to be a very big story about Hawk Girl and Hawk Man, and that's going to be very interesting to see how they set that up. I can't wait for that. Um, but it is going to have stuff continuing in the episode. I'm interested in seeing really what they're going to incorporate in that episode. That fight with, uh, with Andy in this episode is one of the best fights we've seen in a very long time. I absolutely loved that entire scene. I thought it was great. I definitely really loved it. And also, what is Dark going to do with Oliver? I mean, clearly he's trying to manipulate him, but I'm not really sure exactly what Dark's true motive is. We'll have to see what it is, because I'm really not dead set on what exactly he wants to do. I mean, we know, obviously, he has a plan for Oliver, but we don't really know what it is yet, and we're going to have to see, I guess. Uh, but overall, guys, I really love this episode. Like I said, by far one of the strongest episodes of the season. The past, like, four episodes have all been great. I loved all four of them. They've all been fantastic. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I absolutely loved it, and I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for Ain't a Shield, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.